The way to get rid of tension is to do just the opposite of all the things that cause it. Hello everyone, Hugo from Ichiban Painting and today we'll be talking about heavy damage. Uh, <clears throat> if you follow my videos uh, before, you, you know that I, 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 you know, I made uh, some videos how to make paint scratches and, uh, and uh, light weathering, uh, how to use pigments or how to make rust. So today I'm going to be telling you or talking about heavy battle damage. Uh, it's a little bit different than just painting. Heavy battle damage, you actually have to damage your miniature before damage of plastic so basically we're gonna be doing three types of uh, four types of damage today we're gonna be talking about uh, scratches from power claws we're gonna be talking about bullet holes we're gonna be talking about just whether uh, metal chipping off of them the bottom of a tank and the last one we're gonna be talking about multi meta uh, multi meta or uh, tyranid bio acid damage okay so basically, uh, let's start with the tools you're going to be needing. You're going to be needing a lighter. Uh, I prefer the ones that, you know, it's like a torch. A torch. Uh, that works really great. Then you're going to be need needing an obby knife and some, uh, some drill bits. Uh, two things for the drill bits. I use this set of drill bits for my normal holes. And this one is actually going to be for the multi-meta uh, damage. It's a drill bit that I don't mind about it, and I don't mind getting it hot because you're going to have. It's going to involve using the lighter. So if you're a kid, and uh, you should ask your parents to help you do that. But let's let's first of all let's talk about the techniques, okay? And not the techniques, but the principle about the how the weathering and how the damage would be for bullet holes, uh, scratches from power claws, and for the multi-meta, uh, anywhere is fine because you know the the tank could get hit anywhere, uh, so that you don't have to worry about. But let's first talk about the scratches from uh, uh, from um, just paint, uh, metal chipping off. So if you look at the model here, let me zoom in. If you look at a model here, normally uh, the, the metal, if, if the tank's been used for a long period of time, here is going to be where the metal is going to be uh, starting to chip away from the armor. So you want to do this weathering here. One thing I noticed with the ears uh, is that a lot of, uh, actually, a lot of modelers when they were uh, in the Warhammer 40k or in the war uh, gaming scene, uh, they're not quite good at doing weathering on tanks and stuff like that. I'm not talking about everybody, but I'm talking about people that are starting out. Uh, it's, a, it's a concept that's really hard to grasp. Um, uh, and they just put scratches everywhere and normally scratches and, and paint wouldn't or metal chipping wouldn't happen anywhere uh, This is a principle of how to know how to, the tank would actually normally drive uh, Personally, I, I, I started out in the military diorama modeling scene So for me, it's something that I learned, you know quite fast and quite you know f Some of the first thing that I learned is those kind of weathering techniques. So you have to think about that your weathering or your your paint uh, not paint but first of all the paint scratches would happen on any leading leading edge where you know the, the the paint could you know get damaged but as that I covered that in previous video now we're talking about uh, metal chipping off from the model this would only happen in these area or for example on the rhino it would happen on on the uh, exhaust themselves because they're sticking out so technically you could have a rock that would come in and actually chip the metal or dent the metal in these areas so you really want to go in and do it here so as as to the technique on how to do it this is really really actually easy what you want to do is take your hobby knife and you want to go in your area uh, where you want to this is not totally completed this one is finished here as you can see so you want to take your your hobby knife and you want to actually go in and, and actually uh, chip the metal uh, the plastic away and you want to do it in a random pattern and just chip it uh, away from the, the the edges here to simulate that it would be uh, you know cracking and everything so for that it's really easy be careful with the hobby knife but that part is really easy on to the bullet holes if you want to do bolters bullet holes I, I would suggest using a one millimeter drill bit 
because normally bolter holes are, are, you know, when you drill into a bolter to make the hole of the gun, it's one millimeter. So you should use a one millimeter bit. And uh, what you want to do here, you have it. Uh, here you can see the finished product of bullet holes when they're done. And when you're making them, it's really easy. What you want to do is take your drill bit. You want to put it in. I already have pre-made holes and you want to drill them and that's it. You want to make sure that you don't go all the way through because if you go all the way through it's gonna it's not gonna look as nice as if you just you know do it on the surface and normally a uh, you know bolter wouldn't penetrate the armor of a tank anyway it would just dent it. So and then the second thing you can either use um, a hobby knife or this is my spur cleaning to uh, cleaning tool I really don't know how they call it but it's a three-sided triangular thingy that's quite sharp and I really like using this one because it's really fast to make the bullet holes but the principle is the same so you want to stick that thing into the bullet hole itself and then you want to press it on each side of the bullet hole to create the the effect of the bullet hole cracking the you know cracking the armor so basically what you're gonna have is this one that I just made now so it does give a really nice and, and natural effect for that so basically that's it for uh, the technique using these things to make bullet holes and bullet holes you can make it random you can make just one r bullet holes or make a grouping of bullet holes you know you've saw bullet holes before so you can you know figure out how, how you should apply it to the model then on to the next part which is going to be the scratches uh, to, to do scratches normally a power claw has four uh, you know claws so what you want to do is you can take whether or not if you want you can take hold on a second let's see if I have one close by you can take one of the models that you have with a power claw and then actually figure out uh, what what's the the distance uh, the gap in between the power claws so you can see at what distance you need to make your four uh, scratches and then you basically take your your uh, hobby knife and do a scratch and then after that once the scratch and the main scratch is done you want to go in and just work the scratch uh, to make it deeper and make it more uh, you know natural looking so for the scratch that's it on to the last part uh, which is will be a multi-meta hit uh, basically what you're going to be doing is melting the plastic so uh, it's going to be a little bit awkward to do that on the camera but uh, what you want to do is you want to take your uh, a piece of metal that's a good dimension. Here I'm using a 2.5 uh, millimeter drill bit. So you want to heat it up. So basically you want to be careful on that part. Uh, like I said, if, you, uh, if you're underage, ask your parents to use you for that one because it's quite, uh, it could be dangerous. So you want to heat up your, uh, make sure that your lighter is still working. <laughs> should be working I don't know why my lighter is dead okay well, let me grab another lighter sorry about that guys okay so you just basically want a normal lighter so you want to make sure that your uh, your thing is going to be hot and then you really want to be careful sorry I was off frame on for that one you really want to be careful with that technique because you want to hit the plastic but you don't want to go in too deep right so you really want to hit the plastic with the and that actually helps when it's a drill bit because um, it's you can turn it at the same time so make a nice hole but since it's hot it's gonna make the it's gonna make the the plastic melt and do really like a normal uh, melter would be doing you know melting the plastic off so you really want to work it in and you know that's it you have your plastic melted off and you can work it off after you know until you get the the desired effect but that's basically it you know a melter would be burning the plastic anyway uh, the metal of the armor so you can work it out and make it look like this is a burn and then be careful when you you're finished you know to put it in an area where you're not going to be burning yourself but here you go uh, this is what it looks like once it's burned and then once this is done what you're gonna you can actually take but if this uh, now it works again sometimes I like to why is it not working it works right now uh, with the torch what I like to do is when it working actually I like to pop it back in and uh, sorry I'm off frame uh, not off frame but I'm on focus I want to go back in and and actually burn it off again so that the the edges will be burned 
and look more like this here you see it so it more it looks like really melted metal so basically you know that's it for the multi meta uh, damage so when you're painting this you're gonna paint it black inside you're gonna paint it black inside and you're gonna do like a, you know melting so orange and and stuff like that I might do a tutorial on how to do it uh, when I'm painting this guy but it's gonna be on a different video and uh, I'll probably edit I'm not sure yet but I'll probably ed wait until editing this video and I'll actually post pictures of this uh, uh, finished results so you can look and see what it looks like so basically that's it so three ways of doing heavy battle damage for your uh, your vehicles and if you want more you know if you want more information on that you can always ask me question and things like that but you know there's a lot of references on the internet about like how to do military modeling and for that they have great tutorials and great uh, articles about how to make that kind of weathering on tanks on normal battle tanks which means you know it's basically the same thing because we're talking about space marine that the colors are different but it's still a tank so you can check those out on the web so basically that's Hugo from Ichiban Painting I really hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next video.